Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back, Brandon again. Today I wanna to talk about my favorite powerlifting shoe of all time, the Reebok CrossFit Lite TR, AKA the Power Shoe. Now I don't think I'm alone when I say this is my favorite powerlifting shoe of all time because based off of the videos I've done on this shoe, not only have they've gotten a lot of views, but I constantly hear from people that they still wanna buy the shoe and they miss it and they wish it would come back out again. If you caught my last video on it, when I talked about the reasons why I thought the shoe ended up not doing very well in the marketplace, I also mentioned that Jesse Burdick, one of the people that helped consult and design the shoe, had actually recently mentioned that the shoe may or may not be making a comeback. So this video, I wanna talk about the comeback in fact, because there's been some new information released, including some pictures and prototypes, so there is definitely some good news on the horizon. Now as part of this, one of the reasons why it's my favorite shoe overall is because you can literally do everything in it, bench squat and deadlift, and it was helped designed by powerlifters, and it's also the shoe that I've set all my current meat PRs in, including a 601 pound squat, a 336 pound bench, and a 645 pound deadlift. So it holds a special place in my heart except for bench because my bench is terrible. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of the pictures of the new prototype and I'll tell you what's different and what you can expect. So really kick this off with Jesse Burdick who posted this on his Instagram story the other day talking about that he'll be lifting in these shoes and going live the following day to answer some questions about them. So I followed his live stream, asked some questions as well as took some pretty awful screenshots which you might see pop up here and there, but he was nice enough to also do a follow up with me and send some clearer pictures and I'll be discussing those today in the video. So let's take a look at some profile pics of this, and to my eye, it looks very similar to the older shoes. In fact, very reminiscent of the first design of the old shoes. I say the first design because as some of you may or may not know, there was a second generation of these shoes released where basically the material was changed and there was a few small design changes. But if you take a look here at the eyelets for the shoelaces, the very top one is key, as in the second generation ones ended up having a double eyelet, and these prototypes look more like the first. Also on the inside side panel of the shoe, the first first generation ones have those two breathable holes at the bottom and the new prototypes do as well, whereas that second generation doesn't have one. Now the other thing that's catching my eye here are just the design choices on the prototypes. You'll see that Reebok Delta in the lower corner by the ankle, that's on the outside ankle. And then you see what to me looks like a zebra pattern, which I am not a fan of, and I'll talk about some of the design things in the end in my closing statements. Uh, but upon further inspection and upon Jesse's explanation, it's actually Reebok's weave material. So it's what they use on their nano shoes. Supposedly it's a stronger material, which I guess could go a long way if you've had these shoes in the past and had issues with them ripping or tearing. Now, as far as ripping or tearing goes, that's kind of one of the common complaints I've heard from people. Personally speaking, I haven't had that issue with any of my pairs of shoes, and I own six pairs of them, but a lot of people said, you know, the toes rip through. So one of the things that Jesse had mentioned is that they're trying to address that on this newer version by fortifying the toe piece. And he showed this off in the video, but to my eye, it was really tough to tell, but I'll take him at his word as this is something that they're working on improving. But again, only time will tell once you actually wear these and put them to the test. Now, one of the big selling points of these shoes in the past was that it had a really wide toe box. A lot of times lifting shoes are very narrow, and for those of us with wider feet, they can be quite uncomfortable, and that's really where these shoes shined, if you will. But that being said, one of the problems with the design where a lot of people, again, had issues with the toe box opening up was that they were actually a little bit too wide. So I've been told that Reebok has gone ahead and closed the toe box a little bit, made it a little bit more narrow. To me, they look exactly the same, but sometimes the smallest difference can make all the difference. At least that's what my wife tells me. Another small difference you might not have noticed is that they changed the material on the back part of the heel of the shoe. So they made this material softer. That way it didn't rub against your Achilles. I guess some of the feedback they received was some people found this uncomfortable on the back of their heel when they were moving around. And let's be honest, nobody likes to be chafed. Another change is the sole of the shoe. So they're using a softer, grippier rubber now. And although I can't really tell what kind it is, I've heard rumors it may be a gum sole, but again, I'm no sneakerhead, and to me, a gum sole is the very distinctive color, so I'm not sure if that's the case. Regardless, I'd more than welcome a softer, grippier sole, especially for things like deadlifts. So those are some of the small changes you might not have noticed, but one of the larger ones hopefully you did notice or can appreciate is the fact that these have largely been debranded of the word CrossFit. So one of the biggest knocks against the old shoes was the fact that they were called CrossFit like TRs, and not to mention there were several places where CrossFit was written on these shoes. The newer ones, there's all but one spot currently, which still might go away, I'm told, and at least it's black on black, so it's really hard to see anyway. So hopefully that's no longer a concern if those stopped you from buying these shoes in the past. 
So other than that, the shoe remains largely unchanged, which is a good and a bad thing. It's a good thing because there wasn't much wrong with it in the first place. A few design changes and these shoes would have been perfect, some of which have been addressed, some of which haven't. For instance, I'm still not a fan of the laces that Reebok uses. I think they're kind of cheap and way too long. And it's also a bad thing that the change hasn't happened too dramatically because for the most part, if you didn't buy the shoes the first time around, I don't know if there's enough motivation for you to buy them the second time around. Now that's not to say these shoes don't have a cult following, they definitely do. But that being said, I just really want them to be successful. So there you go, pictures of the new Reebok powerlifting shoe. I'm tentatively calling it the power shoe. I really hope they settle on that name because it's a badass name. We need that name, damn it. And I've been calling it that for several years anyway, so it just makes sense. I also wanna thank Jesse Burdick for sending me all those pictures and really being a good promoter of this shoe. One of the misconceptions I think a lot of people have is Jesse and Mark Bell are actually working for Reebok specifically on the shoe. They're not, they're both just consulting and advising. So they give Reebok feedback and tell them what they think would work and Reebok can either take that advice or not listen to them. So at the end of the day, it's Reebok's decision. And I say that only because I'm not 100% satisfied with the shoe, obviously. I'm thrilled that it's coming back. I'm not in love with the design. I wish they just had some basic colors and kept it simple but this is the shoe that we're going to be getting. So I'm going to be buying the shoe and show support. That way, hopefully Reebok will be incentivized to release more iterations of this down the road. And I think that's all we can really ask of you to do too. If you like the shoe, regardless if you like the design or not, but you like the functionality, buy the shoe, show support, and hopefully Reebok will listen to us and see that this shoe is being accepted. It has a huge cult following, and then hopefully they'll start releasing it more. And speaking of releasing, we don't know when the release date is. Jesse just says that hopefully it is soon. He has a tentative date that Reebok has told him, but he's unable to share. But he said soon, which is good enough for me because based off of the prototypes that he showed us and you saw today, they look pretty complete in my opinion. So let me know in the comment section below what you think of the shoe. Not that it matters, we can't change anything anyway, but hey, that's what the internet's for, right? Complaining about stuff that we have no control over. And also let me know if you'll be picking up a pair because as I said, I know I will. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.